Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm gonna do some electrical this weekend in the cabin. And I wanted to show you guys what I'm gonna do, how I do it. And as you may know, I've already told you a number of times I'm an electrician, so. Hey, I'm into my strong suit now, out of the carpentry. So, I spent some time this morning and I laid out my kitchen. My kitchen is gonna go here. Uh, I put my wood rack right, the corner, front corner of my wood rack where this glove is. It's gonna be the front corner of my kitchen. Actually, my oven is gonna go there. Uh, I did some research on the wood stove and I did research on the oven and uh, confirmed that I could go that close to the wood stove. Uh, I've had this sitting here for a few hours and it's cool to the touch. So when you do your electrical first, the best thing to do is for you to lay everything out. A lot of people, when they do a house, they've got drawings already. They pretty much know where all their plugs and switches are gonna be or close. So a good rule of thumb, if you're doing your electrical yourself, is that every six feet from an opening, so say like your door or an opening uh, or the edge of uh, uh, the stairs, six feet, if you have six feet of space, you need to plug in it. Or that means if you have a six foot cord on a vacuum, which is pretty much code, when they make a vacuum, they usually put at least a six foot cord on it. You know that you're gonna be able to get from the plug to the door. So the six feet also applies when you're going to your next plug, but you can double it because if I have a plug there and a plug here, six feet each way will allow me to reach to the middle. So it's 12 feet. So door, plug at six feet, next plug needs to be 12 feet. Carry on with your 12 feet until your last plug needs to be within six feet of the last of the of a wall or an obstruction or an opening. I don't have much to worry about that uh, in this cabin being 12 by 12, but a lot of people with bigger spaces are going to need to think about that. Second thing is that I usually do after I get where I want my plugs. Now you can move them. It doesn't have to be six feet. You could go. You could put a plug every 12 inches if you wanted on every stud. There's no limitation as to the number of plugs you can have in a room. There is a number of plug limitation on a circuit, but that's a completely different topic. Um, what I usually do when I come to the next step is I usually get myself like an eight foot. I don't like to use a two by four because it's heavy. I like to use like a, maybe a broomstick or a two by two. And what you want to do is once you decide what your plug is, plug height is going to be, so there's a range of what you can do and there's no limitation as to the height. Um, what I usually do is I usually pick 16 inches to the top of the box. So I'll take a stick, I'll mark a 16 mark on it. If I've got one mark at 15 inches, then I'll just come up maybe eight, 10 inches and I'll make another mark. I want it to be right about my arm length. So whatever that height is gonna be, it's gonna be my whole length. And then that way, when I've got my drill, I'm not bending over, I'm not holding the drill. I just let my arms hang and I'm at that level and I just drill through every stud at that level nice and comfortable. So I'm, I'm telling you that, but Right here, I'm not doing that. Anyway, if your pole is long enough, you can put another mark at four feet, which is the height of a switch. I go bottom of the, I go bottom of a four, to the bottom of the box at four feet for the, for a switch. And I go to the top of the box for a counter plug. And once you've got a story pole with all those ticks on it, then you can go around your, your room. You pretty well know the layout of how you're gonna run your wires. And you can mark your studs. Okay, I got a plug here. I need a hole. Put your marks on your studs everywhere so you know what you got to do. 
then you're, then you're good to go. Then you can grab your drill, start banging out holes. Everything, all your wires are gonna be nice and level. It's gonna be a super neat installation. My next biggest obstacle is a corner. A lot of people might wonder, how in the heck are you gonna get a wire around that corner? Well, let's say, for example, that my wire hole height was way down here for the plugs I was running. Absolutely, definitely, you can go up the top, over and around. That uses a lot more wire, and with the cost of copper nowadays, that's not a good plan. So, what I was gonna do is I was gonna show you guys how to get through this. And it's not as hard as it looks. What I'll do is I'll hold my drill bit here and I'll mark roughly how deep I want to go. And then I'll drill a hole into that depth. But then I'll do the same thing on this dimension and I'll put them at exactly the same height so that the two holes end up coming together. But, so they'll be like this, but I'll hold it like this to show you. This would be a perfect 90 degree, but this hole, I'm gonna have to drill like this, and this hole, I'm gonna have to drill like this. Well, that leaves a very acute angle right at the back corner. That's gonna make it really difficult to get a wire around. Easy solution to that is, right in the very corner, start on a bit of an angle, drill into your to, to the back of your hole, turn it, drill into the back of your hole, and then you make a pocket, little cavity. You could put a screwdriver in there and help sneak the wire around. The only way to do it. And you save yourself some wire, a little bit more work, but it goes pretty quickly. Hopefully I don't hit any nails. So sometimes this part is the tricky part. What you'll need to do it is a chunk of wire, a screwdriver, flat screwdriver. I got two sizes and a pair of side cutters. What I do is I strip open the wire about the length of what it's going to take me to get around the corner. Take one wire. And the end of the wire, fold it over and turn it into a round nub. That way you can, you have a round tip that you're pushing instead of a, uh, instead of a uh, flat one that can catch. You need to use your screwdriver. Clean out your hole. I should have I should have left the white wire because the white wire would have been a lot easier to see in a dark hole. Okay, 
So I got it. And then you want to put your screwdriver in the hole like that. When you put the screwdriver in the hole, we want to touch your wire up onto the end of it. And then while you are applying pressure on the wire, pull the screwdriver out and it'll force that wire around that corner. And then once you get it on the corner, you can use this hole that you've made here as you push it to just kind of guide it through. And you do that until it's come out your other hole. Just like that. And then, while applying pressure on this side, not a lot, but just enough, you can get the wire to go around that, follow that corner as well. And it probably wouldn't hurt to put a wrap of tape around it too. There you go. That's how you get around the corner. Okay, so I got a huge mess going on here. Well, I had to rush through. I installed the panel, running out of light. But as you can see, all the holes are nice and straight. So now I got to put a couple boxes on for my devices. And in Canada, you need to install a vapor barrier on the interior of a building. And your vapor barrier has to go all the way around your box. So what I did was I took my roll of vapor barrier and I cut off some chunks. And then what you do is you take your box. So basically all you do is mark the height of your plug, which I have marked here. And then you put the vapor barrier offset on the stud and put your plug on your line in the vapor barrier and put your screw through the plug. So I'm going to need to get my drill. Okay. So now I just poke a hole in that, pop, pop, pop the knockout out, put the wire in, and then after that, what I'll do is I'll roll it up like this, and I'll put a roll, of, a roll, a wrap of electrical tape around that and have it in a ponytail, if you will. Then I'll vapor barrier the wall. And then where the plug is, I'll cut a, a slit in the vapor barrier and pull this through. And then I'll take the tape off, open it up, spread it out on the vapor barrier that's behind it now, and then tuck tape around it. That's how you do that in Canada anyway. And that's also the cheap way. You can buy boots for these, which is just a molded piece of plastic that'll go right around it. You can buy boxes that are vapor proof as well. They have a gasket on the back and the back is lined with a foam gasket as well. Strip your wire. Cool it is, you need six inches out of the box. So I always cut it long. Do your ground first onto the back of the box. And that way you can reevaluate your six inches with the ground going further down into the back. Trim them all the same length. And it's 
going to go way better for your device. But on a GFI, there's the upper uh, screw and the lower screws serve different purposes. So usually when you buy a device that has a piece of plastic sticker around the one set of screws, that set of screws is your what they call the load side of the GFI. The load side of the GFI is where you could use this GFI to protect any plugs that you install after this device and connect to the load side. But your feed coming from the panel needs to go into the line side. I've been at this pretty well all day. I'm getting starving. I got to tell you, working in the camp, I don't know what's worse. Working next to a wood stove or having like three square feet of space to move around in. I got that feed that I had in the plug. I just ran it out of the bottom of the panel. So that's plugged into the plug over there. So the whole back of that panel is live now with power from my generator currently. And so I got the lines run. You'll see I ran a red line. Uh, the red one is for the 12 volts for my fridge, for the propane fridge. I ran a wire over here for my propane oven. I need to put a plug on there. And I put another wire down here for a plug by the dining room table. And then, like I told you, I ran a new feed all the way up and across the ceiling. And it came down and put it into the bottom where I used to have that plug of extension cord. And I left a little loop of wire there. Because eventually what I'll do is I'll put, I'll take that out of there and I'll put another plug on the outside wall. And then after I put that plug on the outside wall, I'll run another wire out of it along over to here to another plug. So I meet my six foot rule. And then I'll go back and back into this plug and up to the second floor, which that's already done. So everything's coming together nicely. Uh, I wanted to get this done so that uh, when the inverter comes, I got it all ready. I can just have the feed come out of the inverter, go into the panel, and then it's already distributed to the cabin. Speaking of which, I think earlier in this video or the last video, I told you guys that there was a problem with my inverter shipping. It looked like it had been lost in transit. Turns out this afternoon it started moving again. I phoned UPS and uh, tried to see if I could figure some what was going on. And I kind of think I paid my duty online and I kind of think they forgot to, to release it. Anyway, that may not be the case, but it's on its way again. So that's good. It should be here in maybe two weeks. So I appreciate you guys watching the video. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and I'd really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.